Christine says, hi, all. I have been tasked with doing a total reorganization of a team site for leadership. Consists of files and a wiki. So we found the one person still using wiki. Yeah. Uh, need advice on how to keep current setup visible while I basically create the new version. Is there a sandbox option in Teams? I have been asked to keep the new one hidden while it's in production and make it visible all at one time, similar to a web page being in production until it is published. Thoughts on the best way to handle? Don't give them permission to the team until it's ready. That's yeah. what, really. That is your, your production playground. You don't need a, a sandbox option. You just basically create it. Don't add anyone. Exactly. Yeah. It's like anything. It's like a SharePoint site. We don't, once we've created our new internet site, then we start adding people to it. It's like, is it because yeah. you want to like, or bring people in and out to do just their component if you need them to actually create, but then stop. But yeah, yeah, no different. Yeah, the, the hard part with doing that is that, again, I don't know how this site is being used. I'll use like the, the SharePoint migration example of restructuring and redesigning is that people are still in there in that live environment. So they're making, they're messing things up, they're moving things, they're adding things. And so how do you replicate that over um, as far as the content? Uh, so that's just something that you need to go, you'd have to go in and look at and say, well, what conversations happened? You know, you could just let your organization know, and this is back what we used to do before some of the third party tools improved upon that process. But we'd say as of Friday at 5 p.m., we're going to start migrating. Just realize we're going to migrate over the weekend and that anything new or that's changed will be lost for the new system. Therefore, pause yourselves and uh, and, and then we'll, we'll do the move and then you restart up within the new environment. So I don't know what that for, you know, because honestly, for teams to teams migration for moving and reorganizing third party tools. Yeah, that's I work for an ISV that has one that does that. So I don't do the native experience and it solves some of that problem by going in and automatically doing it in minutes rather than a lot of this, the manual steps through the native experience. But any other suggestions? I mean, besides just telling people, hey, take a pause. And then we're going to move everything over. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, it all depends on the size. I mean, do you need to retain the metadata on the documents mm -hmm. themselves? Yeah. Um, if you need the create date, they're going to need some third party tools. If you just want to do a copy and paste and, and some of that doesn't matter and there's not a lot of rework, then frankly, copy it. Um, keep track of what you've copied. Again, I think absolutely doing it at a downtime, especially if it's a high active site. Um, you're going to really want to make sure before you go ahead, turn one off and turn one on that you do that compare um, the number of files, a number of documents, a uh, number of lists, perhaps that you might have in there to just confirm, make sure everything looks good. And of course, when you do turn one off, I would say um, hold on to it, give it about 30 days, maybe 60 days, just in case anything gets missed, you can always go back to it, pull it on over. Yeah. yeah, I suppose it would be starting from the things that they're not having to replicate, you know, at least having that that piece ready to go and so that you have less amount of work when you've got to do the copy everything over to the new environment to, you know, once you have a look at, you know, what you've actually got. <clears throat> because, yeah, that whole that whole duplication of information and if they're still working in the old environment, then what's the difference it becomes just too complicated. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you could go in again on the SharePoint side and you could in the old version, once you cut over, you could make the old environments or all those light lists and libraries read only. Yeah. Uh, so that you lock out the changes. Um, they'd still be able to go in and chat and do kind of all the different pieces. So you just need to make sure you emphasize the communication. Hey, this is happening. This is where we're moving things across. And kind of for the last mile experience as part of the communication, um, kind of charge everyone who has access to uh, see something, say something. If there's content that's missing, let us know or manually move those things across. The downside of that, though, would be 
the confusion from the user around where they are to where they're going that that yeah. that yeah. pain point that sits in between that then gives from a change you know being in the change comms perspective where you get all these friction points then of what's there and then they just start working in the new and we're, if we're talking we're not wanting them to have access to the new they've effectively don't have access to the files of the read only so you then get caught in that the rock mm -hmm. and the hard place between the two because really you don't want them in the new environment so the permissions aren't there so the docs in the so that anything you can do probably more on that third party tool where you can or have it where you could do some automation even if you think about it so if they create something here it automatically duplicates over to wherever it's going to might be yeah. another one um it'll come down to what are they still working in what could you go don't put anything in here now for the next two days while we move over in yeah well See, that's what I like about the, uh, you know, the, you do the read only on the old site, only when you've moved the content over, you think that it's ready to go live. You and then add yeah. everybody, everybody, the new one, put read only. So then if they see, yeah. hey, something's see missing, yep. Yep. then I can go back and I can see, hey, there's something that's there that's locked down. I can't modify that's not there. And then the, as the admins go in and control it again, that, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of how, you know, teams works a little bit differently. The, What's messier about teams in that scenario, and I get what Christine is is asking about because it's not like an intranet, it's not a SharePoint site, it's much Whoa. messier, right? With <laughs> all of the chats, with all of the, you know, the, all of those other components, with the other automations. Well, there could be a ton in the SharePoint site as well. So, um, you know, it's it, I, I wish it was just as clean as, hey, let's duplicate the structure, let's then just migrate the content. Um, but it's a to-do place, and this is the thing. It's the place to go to do. So if you're there and you're in that mode, that then some at some point someone has to stop being in the to-do mode for you to be able to do what you need to do or be able to do it hard and fast. So that's always the complexity. And then on top of that, what are they needing to have access to in that team? Because that's a whole nother, are they creating lists? Are they creating planners? Are they creating, is there one notes and they're doing it all day, every day in meetings and taking notes. So there's so many other components that plug in that is not just about SharePoint. There's just, there's a lot happening. So you really don't know how complex their working to-do place is to say, you know, hold a nice little production environment. If it's really simple, you know, if it's a simple environment, it you know may not be as messy. But the more complex it is in their working environment, then the harder it's going to be to do a production environment. Right, yeah. and and it's interesting to after just looking at it a little bit more around a total reorg of a team site for leadership. So the files that are in a team site, um, I guess I would recommend creating a new team. You know, if I really think about it. I don't think I'd want to mess with the shared documents uh, because that those are your channels. So if you start messing around with that, that could really screw up some of the architecture that that's already been given inside of Teams. So I my advice would certainly be creating a new team, creating the channels of the file structure that you want to see, and then moving your folder or your files into that new location or copying them. Yep. start yep. again kind of have something yeah. a little fresh because yeah. yeah yeah when you're re-engineering it's not going to work the same it's mm -hmm. just right. yeah yeah depending again yeah depending on what they have i mean if it's just if it's just a you know a, a team with four channels and some files within each one of those and you know, the conversations around you know the all the chats that are going on there that are that are uh, you know the channel conversations around that um so what migrates what do you lose uh yeah. with that with that move that's where i mean a third party tool will benefit can move a lot of those other digital assets that you can't do natively um but mm -hmm. yeah it it i'll be the first to say it in this conversation it depends right <laughs> it depends uh, what's there and, and then don't forget the last part, which is now you have to communicate what you've done. So yeah. if you've re-architected it, channels are a new name. Maybe it's a new department name. Um, you know, you just need to also in your general channel, put the announcement. This is uh, the old layout to the new layout. And this is where you can find things to make it easier for people who are probably used to doing the other way. Yeah. Good old comms.
Welcome yeah. to my world. <laughs> my, my world, change, communication, hey, comms, training. Cl yeah. Clean up the mess. Clean up on aisle 14, comms. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> exactly. Don't here. step yeah. in that aisle at the moment. Should you step in there, you will slip. <laughs> uh, all good.